So up until very recently, I hadn't even bothered touching the tabbing system inside of Vim. Whenever I needed to open up a new file, I would always open it up in a split, but splits have their obvious limitations, so I thought, okay, let's try out this tabbing system and see what it's actually like. And you know what? I wish I had done so earlier. So if you want to open up a new tab, that can be done with the tab new command, and that will open up a blank buffer. But if you want to open up a new file instead of just a blank buffer, that can be done with the tab edit command, and then pass in the path to a file. So let's say my bash profile or something like that. Now another thing you can do if you've configured your vim path properly is the tab find command and what that's going to do is actually let you search for a file. So let's say I open up something like my zshrc which is located in my .config directory. So to have that last command work the way that I've got it set up, basically set your path variable inside your vimrc to dot comma comma asterisk asterisk. This basically means search the directory you're currently in and recursively search all of the children. Now you can always close out of a file by doing the tab close command, but I don't really think there's any point in doing so because you can always just do the normal way you'll quit a file and it will just close that single buffer. So I don't know, however you prefer to work, personally I prefer to work in the way that works consistently across everything. So Another thing you can do is run just the tab command, and what this is going to do is actually modify how other commands actually work. So any command that will open up a split or open up a new buffer, if you have the tab command before it, basically it's going to open up in a new tab instead. So for example, if you do tab help, instead of opening up a split for the help, it will open it up inside of a new tab. Or you can do something like, say, tab split. So instead of opening up a new split for the current file, it will open up a new tab for the current file. And as you can see, it does as we'd expect. Now, obviously, because these are built-in Vim commands, they can be modified in the way that you'd expect from any sort of Vim command. So, for example, you can do something like pass in account. So, zero tab new, and that will open up a new tab in position zero instead of opening it up in the next open position. Now, I'm not going to go over every way to modify these commands. If you know how the Vim commands normally work, try it out with these commands and see what effects it actually has. Now, for moving between the tabs, this can be done with the tab next command and the tab previous command obviously going in their respective directions. But there's also a binding for this as well. So if you do GT, that will go to the next tab, and G capital T will go to the previous tab. And if you're the sort of person who cares about how your tabs are arranged, you can move them around with the tab move command. So tab move will just move the current tab into the final position. If you'd much rather move it by a certain amount, you can do tab move and then minus and then a number. If you just put a minus there, that means move one position backwards. But if you do say, uh, let's do tab move again, and let's do tab move minus two, that will move it back to position zero. And you can obviously also go in the other direction by doing a tab move and then plus, or you can give it a number as well, or you can move to a specific position by doing a tab move and then passing in the index of that position. So let's go to zero and now we're back in position zero. And let's say that you're just generally working and you have, I don't know, an extra split open on this one. So let's just open up something here. I don't know, we'll open up this one here. So sometimes you might forget what files are actually open on all of your tabs. So what you can do there is actually run the tabs command and that will show you every single file you have open on every single one of your tabs. And then if you just want to get rid of all of your tabs and just go back down to one buffer, you can do the tab only command and that will close everything except for the tab that you're currently on. Now, what about some of the advantages of splits over tabs? Well, typically, as I said, I prefer working with splits myself because they allow me to actually see everything that's going on in my workspace. So I can open up as many files as I want. And obviously, as long as I have the screen space for it, I can see everything that's actually happening. It does obviously come with a limitation though that at some point you will run out of physical screen space so you can't have every single file open in your project. Maybe for a really small project it will be fine but if you're working on any serious sort of programming task really anything more than maybe six files and you're basically stuck. Whereas if you work with tabs you can have basically every file on your system open. Now, obviously, at some point, this does start to get very disorganized, and also you don't get much of an advantage from things like movement plugins. So if you're using something like, say, Easy Motion, in Easy Motion, I can actually jump between all of these splits that are open right here. But if I only work with tabs, 
easy motion doesn't have an easy way to jump between all of your tabs. So it makes it a bit less useful. Obviously, you can still use easy motion for other things, but you don't get that one benefit from it. But obviously, they're not mutually exclusive. So I can have all of these splits open here, and then I can open up a completely new tab and open up a bunch of splits here as well. And nothing's really stopping me doing that. Now, obviously, at some point, it's going to get very difficult to remember where files are actually open. Even if you do use the tabs command, if you have too many tabs here and too many splits open, at some point it will start getting really disorientating. But the option is there if you want to do it. The point I'm getting at here though is that you should probably focus on using one more than the other. Get comfortable using one of these solutions and then if you need extra space, start using the other one. So as for my workflow, this is typically how I work with other editors, but I'm slowly bringing it into Vim and just seeing if it actually makes sense inside this editor. So typically what I'll do is only ever open up splits on my main window, so I know that the main window is where all of those files are going to be. Because I find that if I open up splits on other windows, I tend to lose track of where they're actually being located, and then I open up a new instance of it and it becomes a big mess. So for me, it's easier just to know all of my splits are going to be in one place. And then I can have the extra tabs open just so I know the files are there if I need to work on them. One thing that I haven't found a convenient way to do though is take one of my tabs that I have open here and then turn it into splits on my main window. Now I know there's a way to do this with the buffer command. But the problem with that one is you have to actually grab the name of the buffer. I would like to be able to do it with the index of the tab. So if someone either knows of a built-in command to do that, a hacky way to do it with Vim script, or maybe even a plugin that will let me do that, feel free to let me know down below because that's pretty much the only thing that I need to have. Now, as always, if you're going to be doing an action frequently in Vim, I highly, highly recommend actually setting up your own bindings for it. Now, obviously, yeah, there's GT and G capital T, but there's not bindings for doing things like opening a new file to edit, opening a new buffer, things like that. So let's actually go have a look at my bindings. Now, there's nothing special here. And if you're used to working with Vim in a more vanilla way, you're probably not even going to like my bindings. But this is sort of how I like to work. Now, they're still sort of in the process of changing, but there's still something here. So if I press tab, that's going to actually let me switch between the tabs. And I can do shift tab to go in the other direction. So let's actually open up a new tab, our uh, tab new, and tab, 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 shift tab, shift tab, shift tab, basically like that. Now, Obviously, that doesn't work inside of insert mode, but if you're going to be switching tabs, you're probably going to want to do it from normal mode. You can open up a new tab by doing Alt-T, and let's actually put a file in here so it's a bit easier to spot it. So let's put that one in here, and then you can do Alt-1 to move it left, and you can do Alt-2 to move it right. Now, why are they on 1 and 2? Because they're easy keys to hit. Does it make much sense? Absolutely not. So I'm probably going to move it, but I wasn't using Alt-1 and Alt-2 for anything else anyway, so maybe I'll leave it there. I'm not too sure at this point though. So obviously there's still plenty of work to do here, but I think this is a good starting ground and I can build up from here. Now, I didn't know about tabbing in Vim. I reckon for at least a year of using it. Now, I don't know how I managed to deal with that, Somehow it managed to happen. So eventually I found out about tabbing, but by the time I found out about it, I was so used to splits that I didn't really even bother trying to try anything else out. But now that I actually went and tried tabs out, I kind of realized how dumb I actually was. Now, obviously there is plenty more to mess around with. I didn't even cover half of the stuff you can do with tabs. And that's without even getting into the world of plugins that exist, where I'm sure there is some weird and fun behavior you can find for basically any workflow you could possibly want. And if there's not anything for that, you're always able to make it yourself. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Kolbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Montazar, Chico Bento, Joseph Pudity, Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there's links down below to my Patreon, Libra Pay, Subscribe Star, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, BitChute, and other places if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.